folks, welcome aboard Tuesday night between the rolls, Socium Edition. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy some cool stuff like a phone case, shower curtain, pillow, throw a rug, bassinet, a uh, small child who will do domestic work, things of that nature, please check out our shop. Uh, if you are in the market for some dice and who isn't, I don't have them with me because we don't use dice tonight. Uh, check out at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Uh, hit them up. See if they can go ahead and make you some custom dice. Uh, Dave has got like 27 orders in, and they're all bad. Yeah, dogs, I do. So, you know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, if your game stinks unlike ours, ours smells like success, go on over to oddfishgames.com. Check out their line of adventure scents. Uh, over 60 of them. Uh, give your game some smell. Do that olfactory uh, sense. Better for in-person games, but, you know, if everybody has the same scent, you guys can all huff and puff away. Uh, try that. They also make something called the Shine System, so if you want to be a writer like me, only gooder, check out their Shine System. That pays the bills, folks. Now let's get to the nuts and bolts. This is Iron DM, the Socium Edition. Uh, you're about to see a great big continent, and there are eight of us working on filling it, and in December... We'll go ahead. Yes, I know. I, I saved it for you. <laughs> I, I say I saved that shit for you. And why am I doing this, David? You're the one that's supposed to be doing hey, it. Hey, you took it and ran, <laughs> so it's yours tonight, buddy. <laughs> Christ. I totally spaced that. Folks, David was going to do this. I was just going to fill in, and I, I just let my verbose nature take over. Uh, I just didn't have the heart to stop you. You should have. You should just say, hey, Frank, shut the fuck up. This is my show. Uh, we four are going to go ahead and discuss nations in a broad uh, overview tonight. Uh, each of us have at least two, uh, and we'll go ahead and give you broad strokes. In the months that follow, each one of us are going to go ahead and do more in-depth takes on each of these nations. So uh, when it rolls around to December... Uh, we're going to have a few games uh, out of this new uh, continent and see how that goes. Probably really shitty because I'm going to just go TPK. That's going to be my focus. Uh, let's introduce you to the guys uh, who are really bearing the brunt of this workload. We'll start with David. David, who are you? Who or Nobody gives a shit who you're playing. David, uh, who are nobody. you? <laughs> right, right. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about my characters. Uh, hi, I'm David. I play on the Calamity campaign and also our show Cacophony. I play Zadar on Cacophony, the Changeling Rogue, and I play Ingve, the Druid, on uh, our Calamity campaign. Uh, a lot of times you can catch me here on Between the Rolls, and uh, every once in a while I'll hop into a one shot. So. Uh, you can follow me on the Twitterverse uh, at uh, DNDevious on Twitter. And um, yeah, I got a couple of other irons in the fires, but I'll I'll pitch that much later. Sure. So. Yeah, Frank uh, Philbar is currently on a 12-hour hiatus for my mouthy nature. Next up is Ian. <laughs> Ian, uh, tell us about yourself and tell us about the thing that you are dying to tell us about. <laughs> uh well, uh, as he had said, uh, my name is Ian, and I guess the character I'm playing tonight is a 30-something office drone and loving it. No, uh, the thing that I will be plugging is our convention. So if you are the person who likes the last, uh, wait to the last minute and procrastinate putting things off, this is your final notice that you only have a couple of days left to sign up for the con. So we have two days of gaming. So if you don't want to watch those superb owls and people in you know, you know sports uniforms running around throwing balls at each other, whatever it is, uh, you can hang out at our con and play lots of different RPGs. So uh, check out our con. I know at some point maybe there'll be a link or something that Frank will put somewhere, but sign up for our con. How's that for a pitch? That works. <laughs> See, you thought you thought I totally forgot it. No, you know, yeah, I did. I, I, I like you doing me. it because <clears throat> I, as soon as I remembered that Dave was supposed to be doing the show, I felt like an asshole, uh, which is common for me. But you know that happens. Jeff, Jeff, oh, you're no. up next. Tell us about yourself. Hey, I'm Jeff. Um, that's about it. <laughs> Scintillating <laughs> as always, Jeff. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you got us riveted, man. <laughs> David, uh, I had you prep for this. How about I just turn it over to you and you run the show? 
With, okay. With, with right. my apologies. I, I, Could I do the intro over again? Hey, folks! You can't do it any shows. better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. No, I cannot. I cannot. Okay. Well, now we've got the preliminaries out of the way as far as what we're doing tonight. Uh, one of the things that we also wanted to address was a quick recap over uh, <clears throat> the past two shows that we had last week uh, on the Calamity campaign. I'll cover that. So... With that, uh, yeah, our guys are, um, yeah, yeah, we're pretty much tearing up the town. Uh, the episode prior to that, uh, some big thing of light and steam or whatever comes shooting up through the, the, uh, the roof of the building that we're at. Well, yeah, it turned out to be... Uh, just ventilation folks and uh, yeah and in our nature because we thought there was something down there uh, yeah our ranger rolls a nat 20 and fires an arrow (laughs) down a ventilation uh, pipe or something like that sets us up for the mayhem that ensues basically uh, yeah we start to get overrun by some not so friendly people coming up from the bottom. We thought they were undead. Turns out they're not. So we decide to John McClane it off the side of the building. <laughs> and in the process, we discover uh, a youngling in the in the tree. So we rescue this youth uh, from the oncoming marauders that are coming out of the building. And uh, yeah, we proceed to destroy a building yeah uh gas leaks and produce flame do, do not mix so so yeah folks so we toppled the building uh let's see we returned to uh a lost use to their parents who subsequently locked us out of the building uh we had a building fall just about falling on us so we take refuge uh through a manhole cover into a sewer and yeah the adventures down there involving sewer snakes good time for all uh also dave expands his wardrobe yet again this episode he is going to have quite the ensemble so Check it out. It's a, it's a really great episode. So funny. I mean, it's a, it's Azari, it's Dave, it's Ingbe, and our newest player, Kevin, as Tall. So check us out, folks. And Craig sucks. You, <laughs> oh, no, you get to run the show. <laughs> oh, you want me to? Yeah. Did you want to? Yeah, I fucked this up, so you got to oh, take okay. me out of the ditch here. All right. Didn't we have another show this this past week? This it, it, it was cred, but this is socium, so we keep it short. We keep it short. Okay, <laughs> yes, there was a cred episode. Check it out. It was good. It had Kyle, so yeah, that's all you need to know. There were so, only three people in that thing. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I heard it was a it was a good episode. So check it out. So, I all slept. right. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, what we're what we're attempting to do is kind of uh, make broad brush strokes over the lands that we have. Uh, basically, we're going to be covering uh, things like uh, the, the nation's history, just brief, uh, geological features, uh, racial backup, um, backdrop, religious, uh, and in any historical points um, that that are relevant uh, to the lands that we have. Uh, I have I have <laughs> plots of land to uh, that I that I am shaping into a nation. So does Ian. So does Jeff. And Frank has the rest of the continent. So, <laughs> oh, just six, just eight. Eight. six eight. or eight. I don't remember. Yeah, we got yeah. twenty six of them, folks. That's it. That's it. So let's get. started stuff started off tonight jeff we were talking about your uh uh your nation right before we started coming on air do you want to go ahead and run with it bud sure so we were talking about uh down in the south a lovely nation called paradise which uh it got its name basically because before uh way back in the day uh this land was actually a paradise it was the land of milk and honey and 
It wasn't until uh, the three uh, Sorcerer Kings defeated the Night Queen and she put a curse on the land, which caused it to be barren. So now it's pretty much all desert. Um, so uh, as far as uh, it has three uh, major cities, uh, which is uh, Ethos, Pathos, and Logos. And uh, they're basically, this is a slave uh, uh, nation. So they produce uh, mercenaries and sell to the highest bidder. Um, the racial makeup is predominantly human, um, uh, although they do pull uh, other creatures to be able to uh, increase the stock of their uh, slave warriors. Now, um, an interesting thing is there's a town called Pleasure Dome. So the the slavers are only in those three little cities. And the rest of the is just they can do whatever they want to do. Um, and so there's a Pleasure Dome, which is basically kind of like, think about Mad Max Thunderdome. Um, and so they actually have gladiator gleams. Um, and then to a the slaves that aren't good enough to make it into the troops, they actually get uh, sold off to be uh, in these gladiator games. And the uh, the person who rules that town is uh, her name is Mother. <laughs> so, uh, and, and so my apologies, is... Jeff, and to the folks at home, I'm having a real freaking problem getting this to work. Ish. Okay. Yeah. Figure it out. Come on, Frank. I believe in you. Oh, well, that, that is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking, Jeff. I'll get it right sooner or later. When my head's not up my ass. Um, At least the acoustics are good. Yeah. My audio is good today. Yeah. So, so as far as geography, it's almost all desert. There are some hills. Um and the major, the three major cities, they're run by sorcerer kings, and um, the the cities are actually kind of built on a caste system where the ruling class is at the highest peaks, and it goes down to the commoners. So, mother runs paradise. Yes. Is there yeah, a the Thunderdome. No, but that's what I didn't think we could use. You know. Actual names of Lightning uh, Dome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I thought Paradise and Pleasure, they kind of sounded, you know, close together. Plus, it's kind of, I mean, you're in a desert and you're calling it Paradise. I thought that was kind of whatever, ironic. Yeah, I like that. And I'm back to trying to unfuck it up. Ooh, that is really messy now. Okay. I'm done being a moron ish. <laughs> so, uh, back to you, David. Oh, okay. So, uh, was there any more that you wanted to, to cover with this region, Jeff, or that pretty much sums up? Uh, what yeah, you that pretty so much. Yeah, it's pretty much sums up. So. Okay. Okay. So, let's round round it in over to Ian. Ian, what you got, man? All right, so we will be kind of zooming in on Region S. So a little bit more to the west there. So we, for our viewers at home, we may be shifting a little bit of the geography here or there, just depending on uh, some collaboration and areas. So for the main part, we'll be focusing on the mountainous rainforesty chain there, as that is the home to uh, the like, main racial characteristic so that would be like the, the nation of the croaky, which is kind of gets its name from uh, a little uh, golden frog that is indigenous to Puerto Rico. That makes kind of a famous croaking sound. Uh, but it is a amphibious race of like frog kin like people uh, that have an interesting life cycle that's based um, partly inside the mountainous uh, range, as well as uh, outside in the rainforest. So there's a, a whole ecosystem that we can get into depending on time and that. Uh, so drilling into significant features um, 
as Cub mentioned in one of the other previous shows, uh, the predominant antagonistic force in this region would be the, the uh, rise of megapedes. So there is a uh, infestation of various um, millipede-like creatures that uh, have consumed a lot of the other uh, local uh, fauna. Uh, so the frogs have evolved in their uh, dealings with this uh, insidious foe to, to keep them at, at bay. So some of the significant features that haven't been put as symbols yet on this map that will would be uh, locations for the major clans of the frogs. Um, so there is a, a cat is trying to knock over things in the background. There we go. Um, some of the, the notable features so the, the uh, various clans for the frogs. Um, this whole region being a hybrid of mountains and rainforest. Uh, it is a very uh, hot, wet area. So in between some of these chains, there will be um, various wet forests. Uh, there will be uh, canyons with a lot of like either geothermic geysers or waterfalls. Um, so mainly most of the, there won't be much in the way of anything structured or civilized in this region. There will be some regions that have been deforested by cultists that venerate the megapede uh, progenitor or this uh, like the devouring mother, this giant uh, subterranean megapede that is uh, kept at bay through tons of sacrifice um, that is constantly spawning the various um, centipedes and millipede-like creatures that are infesting this place. Uh, so I do have these kind of encampments um, such as like the House of Hunger or uh, Caves of the Dark Dreaming, um, Mother's Embrace, places where you have crazy worm cultists. Um, what other features should we go into? Um, you said notable timeline events, things like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. If there's like an uh, uh, event that you want to kind of give like a brief reference on or something like that, or um, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, some kind of historical uh, event I'm with if you've got like significant historical figures, if you want to mention that as far as the in, in place. So can I give a historical background a little bit? Sure. Um, as far as timeline, I haven't quite figured that out. Uh, in a lot of the cosmology, as far as this world goes, I kind of have, have imagined, and I'd be curious to see what feedback the rest of you might have about uh, planar influences and things from like outside the major sphere plane. Oh, uh, dude, I am totally all about that because that's what I'm mentioning. So, God, oh, that'd yeah. be fantastic. Well, uh, that would be great, but I, I don't want to carve out too much of that. But I imagine one of the more significant, um, two of the more significant features that have happened is um, the emergence of, from some other plane, this giant megapede uh, creature that is um, now sleeping under the earth. So whatever brought it from a different plane here, but also part of the cultural, the history of the uh, frog kids, they're not necessarily a religious or, uh, you know, there's not like a faith-based system they do venerate uh, their their mother that they also have probably have come from some other plane. So deep in the bowels of one of the uh, mountainous chains, there is a rock feature that looks very much like a cerami toad or whatever, the toad with a little young on its back um, that they kind of venerate. It's a little bit of ancestor worship. So I imagine what happened during this cataclysmic uh, formation period of this planet or these giant geomorphs or whatever is when these other planar things perhaps emerged. Maybe they're not even extra planar, but at least that might be in their culture as well as so that they seemingly have come from outside. But. That sounds cool. <laughs> I'm worried about that millipede though, but hey, <laughs> we'll work it out. So it's not like the that movie, The Human Centipede, is it? Oof. No, not that. Not, <laughs> not quite. But. Uh, not quite. Hey, that's his December scenario. <laughs> that's it. That's a one shot by Frank. 
you're the oh, little man. guy in the human centipede and must oh. escape. <laughs> oh man. I keep thinking of South Park's version of that, and it's just like, oh no, not cuttlefish. Uh, <clears throat> wow. So. Oh man. So uh okay, does that cover everything that you wanted to cover, Ian? Or well, I think it just depends on, on things. I feel like uh, by next time I'll have different land masses or at least uh notable features put out on here uh, and i think that'll really kind of help to give more depth and dimension of the area so probably what we could do is work offline to put some areas and then see what type of cultural transmission or maybe between your region and my region since we are bosom buddies sure sure uh, one of the things we are using, folks, is hexographer. So one of the things that we'll be doing is coordinating with Frank about uh, the hex grid coordinates on where our features will be as far as like prominent cities and land landmarks and things like that. So, so we still have that to do. So we got a lot coming up in the next two months. So, but, uh, you know, things are really starting to take shape. Uh, as you can see on, on the map, uh, Frank has a lot of features already mapped out with uh, his continents, uh, part of the continent, as well as uh, Jason has, uh, has a lot that uh, he established with his as well. Um, so, and then Jeff, Jeff did an awesome job with what he's got. Now, Frank, <laughs> do you want to tell us more about uh, what you added uh, since the last time we spoke? Uh, sure, David. I'll go ahead and handle that. Uh, originally, I we all took turns, uh, grabbed a couple of nations. Uh, the first two nations I took were Osmana and Rebros. So I'll go ahead and start off with Osmana. Uh, it is set in the Carpathian Wooded Mountains, not Evergreens deciduous trees, uh, but a heavily mount mountainous area. It extends down from the Apexian Mountains, which is something that Carol has, <clears throat> and she'll kill me if I say Nazi dwarves, so I won't say that. Uh, Osmana <laughs> is forest gnomes. Uh, there are only three major cities, and there's only small pockets of civilization everywhere else. Uh, it is exceptionally difficult to go ahead and cross this country. Uh, the three major cities, Oras, uh, Regat, the capital, and Malstia, 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 sorry folks, my throat's acting up again, uh, are all connected by a road. This road is heavily patrolled. Uh, Regat uh, is where the uh, royalty of the nation sits, uh, and it is the 14th Dom. Uh, of the Subo dynasty, uh, Kojak the third. No, he is not bald. Uh, Osmana <laughs> extends all the way to the Quarter River, named because it is a quarter mile across, uh, and sandwiched in between the mountainous region uh, is the hinterland, which in the English dictionary is the land between uh, water coastal and mountains. So uh, this is the hinterland. Uh, in what I'm calling common year 987, uh, they had a great modus over here in Aquanus. Uh, Jeff's mountains uh, used to be filled with humanoids. Uh, those snotty bastards came down and wreaked havoc in Aquanus. Uh, some of the Aquanus people have moved across the Quarter River and now live in the hinterland. So far, the forest gnomes do not have a problem with that because the Carpathian Mountains are wonderful this time of year. Um, one of the weird items I put in for this one, uh, maybe you'll see it in December, maybe you won't. Uh, Malastia, Malastia, fuck it, I'm going to have to change that name. Uh, Malastia? <laughs> Malastia, that's what it is, Malastia. Uh, I think I named it for Firefly, I'm not sure. Uh, it sits in a gorge. Uh, in front of the gorge, just off the Dire Shoals, is a swamp. Uh, any exterior uh, personnel, uh, equipment, merchants, have to come through the North Port or the South Port, Oras. Oras is by far easier but it is built on the side of a mountain so if you think uh star wars 
two, I think, when uh, General Grievous was at that multi-stage place. That's kind of what it is, but it's a crevasse. Uh, Melastia has a problem with clearly river pirates that can hide off into the swamp. And here recently, rumors of a large amphibian creature, read Froggy Moth, uh, is uh, doing some damage to the shipping lanes. Uh, Asmana doesn't much care for outsiders. They accept them because uh, merchants bring good stuff. Uh, but Asmana is trying to keep itself racially pure, and sooner or later the hinterland will have to be taken over, probably with the assistance of Carol's Nazi dwarves. Uh, and we will move, because we need breathing room. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it borders uh, the three countries. It borders Aquinas, uh, the Apixian Mountains, uh, and this area, which is... Damn it, I didn't put the name on it. Uh, the Kingdom of Lingus. Uh, and that's your fantasy realm, but we'll get more into that at a different date. But that is Osmana in a nutshell. Uh, look to the swamp for some real problems. Uh, oh, also the military. And I know I gave him a specific name. Didn't write it down. It's written down in the thing. Uh, but the military patrols that road. And if you do not have your papers... They will take you into custody, and that is a long-ass haul between those three cities, and anything can happen. Uh, so if you're looking for pig-headed, racist forest gnomes, Osmana's your homeland. Back to you, David. Why, thank you, Frank. <laughs> that is, you got a little manifest destiny thing happening there when you said you had to spread out a bit. So. Well, you know, that those nasty humans in the hinterland. I tell you, man. <laughs> They're getting evicted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, that brings me uh, to my uh, region, uh, Region Y. So it is peninsula region right next to the, the area that Ian was describing. And to introduce this, uh, this landmass here in this peninsula, uh, I, I have deemed this area as the nation of Mistra. And uh, I had a little introduction written uh, about it. So I'll go into it. So basically I'll set it up uh, from the age that followed the calamitous events of the great upheaval, a land emerged, the waters receded from the great floods uh, caused by the world's rising seas. Uh, the land was rich in soil and in its diversity of flora and fauna as nations throughout the continent uh, had their explorers begin claiming newfound territories for their own dominion. In this region, uh, the Ladrin from the Fey Realm discovered this most southern region. Following the era of their great schism, their exiled Fey matriarch Mistra and her court laid claim to the land founded uh, in this region. They found it uh, real uh, uh, they found it suitable for agriculture uh, and for cultivation. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, the silt and rare minerals that flowed from the river uh, in, and from the land's interior were, were well suited for agriculture, also for uh, uh, mining minerals and things like that with the foothills. Okay. So one of the things that, uh, that, happened was as a city was built uh, within the heart of Mistra. And uh, Mistra and a court set up there and uh, basically a lot of the arcanist and some of the juridic, uh, juridic uh, council from this Fey realm uh, started to build a, a city. And basically it is, it's kind of like Babylon uh, with uh, hanging gardens and, and things like that. But one of the things that were discovered in the region was that this had uh, a keen magical ley lines that kind of came to a point. Uh, they, 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 the sages in Mistra wanted to harvest these arcane resources. And, but the Mistra and her court wanted to preserve the land 
uh, as much as possible, keeping things sustainable and just uh, really not alter the, the land. But uh, the scholars had different plans. Uh, so this erupted into uh, another schism uh, between the, the sages and the Dru Druidic, Druidic uh, people of Mistra. Well, one of the things that Mistra did was with this, she was able to uh, separate the sages and the juridic uh, residents of Mistra uh, by agreeing to resettle them down towards the coast. And the sages there, they, uh, they found a good spot for this, uh, to harvest this arcane energy and set up the city of Mystere on the coast, uh, out by the Bay of Ghosts. Uh, and that's like right above the river, uh, right above the swamp, right around that, that hex grid right there. Uh, they also set up uh, some trade points uh, because there's uh, the nations up towards the north uh, by the Claw Mountains and stuff like that. Some materials needed to be harvested there for uh, the civilization of Mystere that was forming. So uh, an outpost, but uh, also that developed into a city, uh, it's called Reverie, and that would be over there. And there's a little history uh, to Reverie and Mystere. Uh, basically, one of the, the ways that they uh, solved the, the schism between the sages and, and the Druids was that uh, the Druidic Council uh, I mean, after, it wasn't really like a bloody revolution, but it was, it was just uh, political upheaval. It didn't, it didn't end up in a civil war, but it, it was getting close. <laughs> and one of the things that they agreed to do to move these uh, sages to Mystere, and they wanted to keep the, the realms, the lands up north pure, one of the things that they did is they moved the, the sages to Reverie first. And Mistra, using her magics and stuff like that, wanted to kind of alter their memories of what their city of Mistra was. That way they can keep it pure and keep the sages separated uh, from their society. So they altered their memories and, and it was like a kind of dream state. And that's how it got the name Reverie, because they could not remember the city of Mistra. To them, it's like a lost civilization. So with Mystere and Reverie, and the sages moved down the river and settled on the coast, uh, there's also this uh, swampy landmass in the middle of the peninsula, and that is called the Marais. Oh, Marais, Marais, or whatever. I used French, folks, because <laughs> they were a ladrin. Uh, so uh, basically it's like a morass uh, that's there. Uh, there is uh, settlements there as well because they're branching into the lower peninsula. And um, the, I'll go into the racial makeup of this area. There were indigenous um, uh, peoples of the area, mostly human, but also gnomish as well as goblinoid. Uh, the goblinoids uh, had tend to uh, settle around the, the swamps and the jungles of the lower peninsula. So that's where we have it. And those are the land map, uh, the, the th three main cities that I have. Mystere is, I mean, Mistra is kind of lost. Mystere is on the coast. Reveries at the top of the river. And the moray is down uh, towards the, the swamp that, that kind of separates both sides of the Bay of Ghosts. So, uh, yeah. So um, one of the things uh, about its uh, history, uh, again, uh, this happened, we didn't establish a timeline. So since we were talking about the Fey Realm and stuff like that, I was just assuming with the lifespan of elves and stuff like that, this has taken over a millennia to, to settle. Uh, Messier itself is uh, what I, I had envisioned it was a pretty sophisticated uh, civilization. Uh, lots of arcane studies, 
uh, some technology uh, had been developed. Uh, there's um, the, their technology was also uh, used with uh, irrigation and turning some of the jungles into uh, uh, very uh, productive farmlands and things like that. Uh, materials were also harvested and areas were cleared. One of the things that they did, of course, uh, with uh, shipping moving uh, up the river and then around the Bay of Ghost, uh, they set up like shipyards. So they're known for shipbuilding and stuff like that. They have a lot of timber uh, from the jungles themselves, a lot of hardwoods. So it kind of made it suitable for that. Uh, let's see, what else did I have? Um, one of the things about the Lower Peninsula, it's a little un unknown. Uh, like I said, they were starting to, to branch down uh, uh, from through the swampy area and in through the morass and into this uh, Lower Peninsula. And uh, according to what I'm setting up as its law, uh, there's a lot of monstrosities, uh, aberrations and things like that. So uh, let's see, their economic status, uh, basically the, their main sources of revenue uh, basically would be, since I said they were a little more sophisticated, they would have sh uh, shipbuilding, shipwrights, um, parchment, uh, Manufacturing, actually, um, one of the things is uh, books. Books were going to be something, and knowledge was actually going to be a commodity that they were going to use to trade with. Uh, there's some other things, such as citrus fruits, rum, components uh, made for technological um, wonders that'll be coming, as well as like hemp, linen. Uh, aquaculture, and I believe rice. Uh, so anything that'll be inputted, uh, imported would probably be like metals, gemstones, weapons. There are uh, uh, other like, uh, I guess, um, meat products like beef and things like that that would not be indigenous to the area. And uh, as far as the infrastructure goes, the nation's capital is Mystere. Like I said, Mistra, that city is lost. It's because the memory of it was erased and it's been uh, preserved by the, the Druids. Uh, Reverie is the up at the top by the, the mountains and uh, the river at the top of the, uh, over a little to the, there you go. Reverie, it'd be right there and uh, the Mirai. One of the things that I proposed was like an enchanted causeway uh, from Mystere uh, through the swamp uh, to the beginning of the pen peninsula. So that's one of the things that I was proposing as a landmark for there. So uh, as far as like the demographics, uh, it's a pretty diverse uh, nation. A uh, lot of elves, half elves, humans, gnomes, and goblinoids. Um, the capital of Mystere itself is a republic as far as governance. Uh, let's see, there's like a council uh, made up of sages. Um, let's see, I've got sages, uh, citizenry, merchants, and things like that. It's kind of kind of similar to our Republic, uh, elected officials to represent uh, each part of the population of Mystere. So, but anyway, I know I got really into it, Frank, but that's what I got. That's what I got from Mystere. And it'll be evolving because I'm gonna be working with Ian uh, about uh, uh, some of the uh, borders and lines or whatever, as far as the river. So we're, we're gonna have to work that out a little bit, so. Where'd but, your people come from? Uh, they, we were talking about the extra planar uh, things. The indigenous folks are the humans, the gnomes, and the goblinoids. Uh, where they migrated from, I mean, over millennia, I'm not quite sure, probably uh, from the mountains and other uh, regions west. 
Uh, they probably made a tra uh, trek over to this side of the coast. But the Aladrin themselves, they came from the Fey Realm, so they're kind of extra planar. That's why when uh, Ian mentioned that, I jumped all over that because that's that's what I had in store. So. Yeah, because I have some interesting concepts for Z, I and mean, we can always um, you know juggle some things around, to maybe move S to one side and Z toward some of the concepts that I had. Because I had, I, I was trying to figure out. Um, uh, what would be like an indigenous race um, looking at Z, there's a lot of different type of, like, you got a mix between swamp, rainforest, rainforest, swamp, rainforest, hill, rainforest, mountain. And so I started thinking about an extra planar origin with the possible races there. Um, and well, I don't want to eat up too much time here. Do, can I go a little bit into one concept of Z, bounce it off of you and see if, if that's a... Sure, go for it. Sticks? So I started thinking about uh, having more of like an Indian influence since there's a lot of like um, thick jungles and thinking about interesting different things that could you know tie in in Frank one point suggest Yanti. So thinking of an extra planar origin, I thought it might be interesting to have some of these bizarre otherworldly things come. So it insinuated a little bit of like elder cores, but there being like two of these outsiders that come like um locally known something and I'm work, you know, wordsmithing it like the God of, of um, uh, the God of many faces and like the God with, of no face raising some of the beasts that were there or maybe bringing some other outsiders with them and shaping them, giving them uh, form and function. Uh, but basically I thought it'd be fascinating to have a race of like shape shifter, shape shifters like Rakshasas or other things like that and having another disastrous outcome, perhaps these two outsiders were thinking, since it might be brothers in one type of mythology, uh, the god of no face being uh, jealous of the god of many faces, the one that actually gives beings their shape-shifting power, jealous, slay him, and causing the diaspora and shattering of the um, uh, shape-shifting race and locking them into one form. So I'm thinking about having a lot of different animalistic races that inhabit this area um like okay. a crocodilian person an orangutan type of a race a young tea based one and then something close to like rashasha or a tiger based one uh and each one motivationally having different um racial amnesia but different motivations based on a little bit of their odd lineage um perhaps like the tigers of the young tea being a little bit more on the evilish side aligning with one of the more mischievous outsider deities trying to figure out a way to restore the broken and killed trait shift shape shifting god to regain their powers and gain dominion um but then having a multitude of races would give them an interesting way to work with the landmass so the crocodilian can work with the mangrove swamps and make canals for transportation inward and build a more infrastructure orangutan building more like Swiss family Robinson style um, villages of suspended above the tree lines. Um, and then um, Yon T doing whatever Yon T do. So I don't know, even small, un, you know, kempt animals and things, who knows. But then that I thought it could cool. be interesting because we've talked about this prismatic coast having a large um, coral reef. I started thinking about mer people. So there could also be perhaps a mercantile, like a exchange or trade with. Um, amphibious people as well so having in a region where there could be even like coastal or dock based villages um that could rope up to treetop villages i don't know thinking something about that but i don't know if that might be too odd and chaotic but i thought it might be a colorful area to have more animal-based races and much more uncivilized wildscape campaigning Oh yeah, that that'd be fun. Uh, definitely, uh, diverse air diversity would be really good. It sounds uh, for like that Robin region. Hood. Disney's What's that? Rob Disney's, Disney's Robin, Robin, Robin Hood. Hood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, I'm still uh, I know we have other regions to discuss. Was there other things that you wanted to discuss uh jeff was there another reason that you want a uh, region you wanted to showcase tonight another reason <laughs> i do i have a uh, region g 
which is the uh, great nation of Tar or Tor. So basically, uh, this region is basically centaurs and centaur like creatures. So um, at one, we have at the lower level, well, I guess we'll start with the geographical. So we have Heart Mountain in the south, and we have Firehead, two volcanoes, um, one up in the north, one in the south. And so in these mountainous regions in the south, we actually have goat tar. So dwarfs on the top and uh, goats on the bottom. So, and they're living in the caves uh, in the mountains. Uh, Can I and ask then, a random question about like, so we have a lot of centaur, you said gotars. Can, do they make milk products? Like, could they could you make like a gotar cheese? Like, well, uh, you know, there's also mutars. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure you share the mutars. <laughs> the mutars can make uh, some good cheese there. <laughs> oh, I really don't want to know. Oh my god! I'm envisioning Mad Max now. I'm thinking like... Wisconsin. <laughs> I love this. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to derail. I it just it was an intrusive thought. I was just like, go go tar cheese. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know how they harvest it. <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> right, one pull after the other. Um, all right, so, sorry, Jeff. Continue. So down in the south, there's a, a, a town, a port called uh, Rockport. Um, and that's basically, you know, where you have humans, elves, just a whole smorgasbord. And then above that is the Gotars. So there, it's a town where you, the top part of it is pretty much uh, for the Gotars at the top. But they'll come down out of the mountains, you know, and interact and trade uh, with Rockport. Um now, at the beginning of time, the centaurs pretty much just roamed all the the country, but uh, next to it is Humana, and they basically invaded that side. So uh, we've been pretty much pushed all the way back to the hills. So we do have a town sanctuary, which is basically uh, in the middle. And this town is kind of, I wait up. No, that one's, uh, that's, yeah, the top one needs to be deleted. It's okay. right there. My yeah. Bad. Yeah. Sanctuary yeah. is right there. So sanctuary, the name for that is basically they give sanctuary to anybody. So if you come from humanity or you come from any other place and you ask for sanctuary, this town will give it to you and they'll protect you from whoever's trying to attack you or, uh, you know, kill you or whatnot. Um, so, um, and then in that area is, uh, the Mutars, which they're going to, they're also known for their ale. So they make a really good ale. Good milk stout. That's right. <laughs> milk stout. Wow. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry, that was utterly bad. <laughs> You're making it worse. Move yeah. over and let Jeff finish. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and then we have Harmony. Harmony is another port town. Um, it's at the very top. Um, so that's kind of using for the trade. And it's another mixed use where, you know, you have all races there. Um, and then uh, Jubilee is close to the mountains that have trees. And then there you actually have the owl seed and you have like the... Um, basically half human, half deer um, people. And then also, last but not a little bit of piece of the bunny tars, which are half gnome, half rabbit. Oh, Jeff, God. who are you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I know I got a little carried away with the, but I thought that would be uh, interesting, you know. There's um, a lot of bardic activity in these mountains. Wasn't <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Uh, the hills are alive with music. Yeah, that they are. <laughs> so at the top firehead, um, there used to be fire giants, which may still be there. 
but early in the centuries, uh, the fire giants actually attacked um, down the mountain, and they also attacked this citadel, uh, which is a human uh, citadel that got attacked as well, but the centaurs and uh, gotars, you know, helped fight off the uh, fire giants, which they haven't seen in hundreds of years now. So it's kind of fable tales. And um, so the Citadel is basically like a knowledge center uh, that's run by humans up in the mountains, but um, it's hard to get to. So, that, you know, you almost have to do a quest to go to find out your info, you know, if you needed to find out whatever you wanted to find out from there. Oh. Are they Tibetan monks? Um, they or, could be. Or Tibetar monks? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh, man. But uh, there is a man, uh, they call him the old man, and that's who kind of lives in the Citadel. So the man in the Silver Mountains. If you uh, know that reference from Rainbow. Monk Tars. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. He's going to run with that. You know that, Jeff, right? <laughs> so, well, Frank, so that- what. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so that's uh, the nation of Tar. It's, it sounds like quite the place. <laughs> it sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, Frank, did you have uh, anything that you wanted to to well, go over with one of yours? Well, I kind of wanted to sow my wild oats in Tarland. But, uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll go ahead and talk about Rebros. Uh, it is a solitary island. It wasn't always that way millennia ago. It used to be part of the mainland, uh, but it broke off. It is now populated by my personal favorites, Tortles. Uh, again, antisocial. Not all of my nations are antisocial, but the Tortles are kind of standoffish. Uh, they run through a triad system of government, <coughs> excuse me, and that is uh, the scholars, the merchants, and the military. Uh, and as you can probably already guess, yes, the military is going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But the biggest That's thing awesome. about Rebros is its uh, ability to tan anything. Since the Turtles are vegetarians, all of the herd animals on Rebros are used to cultivate the fields and their uh, hides are used to go ahead and make fine leather goods. Uh, this has helped with the tannin in the red mangrove or the charcoal in the red mangrove uh, forests on the south. The black mangrove uh, on the north act as water filtration systems. So they've got a lot of clean drinking water on Rebros. Now, there are two interesting points about Rebros, and one of them is not shown. It is surrounded by a reef called uh, the Roshan Reef. Uh, I, made, I went ahead and made the turtles Vietnamese, just because. Uh, so there's a reef surrounding it. Uh, their capital and only city on the white sands of Rua is Rua. Now, the main reason adventurers would go here is to go ahead and visit all the shipwrecks along the reef, uh, assuming they don't hit it. Uh, the other thing they would go for is this chasm, uh, a.k.a. Han So. Uh, it, in it lives the Great Old One. He is a seer of inestimable age, uh, and he, uh, he is believed to live down in this chasm which the Tortles of Rebros think is the inner shell. They're under the impression that Rebros is a giant ancient turtle uh, who has sat on the surface so long all of this land has grown around. Uh, so mining is strictly forbidden here. Uh, and those that die are thrown over into the water so that they can sink down and become one with their deity. Um, just to make it quick, um, I'll stop there. But that's Rebros, uh, home of the Tortles. Back to you, oh, David. Alrighty, thank you, Frank. <laughs> well, I have sex section C and really don't have a lot of time to cover uh, anything with it. But uh, basically, the the name of the the, the nation that's going there is 
It's called Verdania, named after the verdant green because most of the area is either wooded or it's or it's um it's a plains um region. Um, as far as the the makeup, as far as the um, what I had in mind, I envisioned uh, humans being a dominant uh, species there with uh, towards the forested area, more uh, forest gnome and harangan, which are the rabbit folk. Uh, also uh, in the planar regions, there are, uh, it's like a, a Mongol type civilization, nomadic of <laughs> centaurs. <laughs> Jed, <laughs> damn you, Jeff, and and, and uh, basically that's going to be kind of kind of in the vein of the like Dothraki or something like that. So that's basically what I have in mind for the region. So that's still developing. So I'll have more on that coming soon. So anyway, is there anything else that we need to cover, gentlemen? Ian has um, a, a second one, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Ian, go ahead. Well, I've got a third one as well. Well, I the one of my other regions or the third region of mine doesn't really have much other than a uh, as far as uh, the region q there uh it has a cabal of, of secretive uh druids that are remnants of the race that was obliterated from the eldritch horror induced volcanic catastrophe um of this island it was kind of covered in session one so haven't figured a, a name out yet or kind of, excuse me, clan organization um, other than they live more on the western side of the island where the trees are. Um, and they are trying to kind of erase and atone for their civilization's uh, grave mistakes. Um, so they are engaged in the labor of converting the uh, revenants of their race so they they themselves are the actual um descendants of the race of this island um but during the cataclysm most of the race was either destroyed you know kind of obliterated to ash a lot um vesuvius or uh, came back as as undead revenants and so they are trying to uh pacify those ash zombies with uh plants uh, so through uh, very intensive like plant-based magics, uh, basically converting those ash zombies into shambling mounds. Uh, so over time, as their bodies consumed by the plants, it'll eventually release their souls. That's pretty cool. I was hoping for drunken Irishman. <laughs> well, you did. Well, oh, there. I was going to say is that. I was going to make a bad pun, but I, I, I will try to behave on this channel. Uh, <laughs> let, let's go ahead and replay the tape there, uh, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. So, um, yeah, I, I think we got a lot covered uh, this evening. So um, I think with that, we're about running out of time. So I guess um, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Do you want to take it out, Frank, or do you want me? <laughs> Oh, I can do it. Uh, folks, well, this... you're never to plug the con again because we oh, want you to God. come to the con. Enough of the con. It's going to be this weekend. Folks, if you haven't got your badge, get off your dead ass and get your badge. We have <laughs> over 30 plus games. Uh, once you buy the badge, you get into all the games free. Just let the DM know you're coming. Uh, we got a lot of stuff other than that. We got an arcade, a con shop, a chess set, music galore. Uh, a, a Gen Con, an ad for uh, what Adventures in Phil Bar is going to do at Gen Con that I got to say I, I, I did a nice job on. That's pretty cool. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, 15 bucks for both days. It's a two day event uh, with a lot of games and a lot of stuff. Meet new friends. Everybody out there uh, on social media, oh, you know, I never get to play. Well, here's your fucking chance. Uh, and I'm causing Ian to get apoplexy by my anger <laughs> but you know if you're bitching about never getting to play here's your chance uh 15 bucks we don't keep any of it it all goes to charity uh we've already paid our bills so anything we get's going to charity uh that being said uh this thursday cacophony uh 
Which dumb shit operated the time travel device, David? I oh, can't come remember. on. Uh, and then Saturday we have a one shot. Uh, so that's what's on our plate. So, or, no, Saturday is not a one shot. I was about to say Saturday is that. Sa- thing Sa- that Actually, I, I still have a seat for Saturday. I think I have two seats available for Sunday's game. So, uh, Confectioner's Conundrum and Cinderfella. That's right, folks. Cinder That's right, folks. Fella. He went there. Uh, Ian, I think most of your games are sold all out. Sold out. All, sold all sold out. All sold out. So no out. more board for That's you, the folks. first time in all of my running games cons, all seats, and so, they're all waitlisted. So see all you folks that uh, wanted to go ahead and uh, do Mork Borg. Well, you sat on your ass too long. Too late. Now you got to play my stupid game or any of the others. We got we got a lot of stuff, folks. Uh, hey, hey, the the uh, the creator of Vast Grim is running Vast Grim, which is more Morgan space, and he saw a seat in his games, and you should check that out because that's going to be a real rad. There you go. Saturday and Sunday, MurderHoboCon.com. Uh, we're over on Tabletop Events. We are the second event listed. I'm not sure why the first event is still there. It's already passed, but who am I to? Pitch. Uh, so check that out. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit, join our Discord. If you want to buy our stuff, the link is down there. If you want weird custom dice at Pirate Dog Dice. If you want your games to smell a whole lot better, uh, Adventure Sense through OddFishGames.com. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., tune in in two weeks again when the other half talk about their nations. Uh, you might see one or two of us again. Uh, just depends on scheduling. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo, or Murder Hobo Inc., uh, have a great rest of the week. We'll talk to you later. Big kiss and wave. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>